Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ruscio. I'm here today with Travis Baird, who's had some pretty good results with the Healthy Gut, Healthy You protocol. And he was kind enough to take a moment and share his story with us. So Travis, thanks for being with us today. Sure. Can you tell people a little bit about your, I guess your road up to Healthy Gut, Healthy You, and, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I had th- three major symptoms, um, loose stools, bloating, and gas. Uh, and these uh, I had for as long as I can remember, really. It got to the point to where loose stools turned into uh, uh, fairly frequent diarrhea, and um, uh, the gas got to be something that was um, uh, it, it was uh, uh, inconvenient to say the least. Sure. Um, so I started to look more and more into uh, is this normal, uh, and what could be causing these symptoms. Uh, that's uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, so I think I first uh, heard you on the Mind Pump podcast. And uh, that led me to listen to your podcast. Um, uh, and that's about the time that the gut book came out, uh, The Healthy Gut, Healthy You. So I thought this is great. This is exactly what I'm looking for, uh, something that I can read that uh, will kind of guide me through the process. There's so much information. And it's very easy to get quickly confused in which direction you should go. So I started the, um, the, uh, the process outlined in the book, The Great Nate. And, um, I did the, uh, the fasting for four days. The first time I've ever done that. Um, I tried a few of the different diets, uh, the, the paleo, um, the low FODMAP. Uh, and at that point I didn't experience any kind of, uh, uh, noticeable improvement, um, from any of the diets or the fasting. Uh, I was kind of just back in the same spot. Mm-hmm. So I proceeded to go through the antimicro microbial step. Uh, and when I got through the first month, um, I thought, you know what, this is just a waste of time. I'm, I'm, I had zero, uh, zero benefit at this point. And I thought, you know, this is just, I'm kind of at a dead end again. Um, it was about at that time that, uh, I had a, a complete turnaround, uh, about the first week of the second month. And, uh, it was at that time that all my symptoms improved, uh, almost just completely went away. And, uh, my digestive process was better than it had been uh, since I could remember. So, uh, I continued through the process. And, um, at that point, uh, I, I think anything the book told me to do, I would, I would follow through with, you know, I would, uh, I would had, had, you, had you done the probiotics leading up to that or did you gloss yes. over? You know, yes, you know. I had tried, um, the, the diets by themselves. Um, before I had even uh, heard of the eight great Nate, I had tried many different types of probiotics and either, uh, I had no benefit or sometimes my symptoms would get worse. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just by, uh, things that I would read on the internet and research that I had done on my own. And that's a good point there that we should just quickly, um, mention, which is we don't want to force a, a dietary solution to a non-dietary problem, right? So you had gone through the dietary steps and I'm assuming you gave at least the paleo and the low FODMAP diet a trial. And for people watching this, you know, we want to give diet its fair due, but we also want to know when to move beyond diet and not flounder in the dietary purgatory forever. And, mm-hmm. and so I'm glad that you did the dietary trials, but then, you know, you were reading the book protocol, which gave you, okay, Diet hasn't done it yet. Let's not try to force that. And let's now escalate the therapies. And it's also, I think, notable to mention patients can be important, right? Some people will respond only after being on antimicrobials for a couple of days to about a week. And in your case, you had to kind of stick with it and get to, I'm um, guessing it was maybe five or six weeks of total time on the antimicrobials before you started seeing some improvement. Is that, is that about accurate? Yep. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I had tried some of the uh, antimicrobials before, uh, in particular, uh, oil of oregano. I had tried that. Uh, uh, one, one of the podcasts I listened to is Ben Greenfield, and he uh, has one of those that he recommends for gut issues. But uh, by itself, I had no improvement at all. Um, so I don't, you know. It, another, which is another key point, which is, and this is something I, I probably harp on in the book, which is there's not necessarily a magic protocol. But, th- but there is a, a really a magic process, if you will. And, and this is one of the things that I see throughout many people, which is they try 
one thing in isolation or another thing in isolation, but they're, but they're not sequencing these things in the right order and kind of laying this foundational aspect, building on top of that, and then building on top of that kind of like this pyramid model. And, and that, in some cases, is a difference between success and failure. Um, so really, I mean, kudos to you for diligently working through the protocol because... Uh, you know, that, that's, I think, again, sometimes the difference between succeeding and failing, which is having a map for how to apply these therapies and sequence them rather than just kind of trying this, trying that, trying the other thing. And uh, I think that's what I love most about the book is it gives you that map. Uh, and it, right. it's, it's really necessary. Uh, I'm surprised there aren't more books like this to this point. There's so much information about a diet or about a certain antimicrobial, but uh, none of it uh, is encompassing. It doesn't fit together there's no uh laid out plan uh there's no pyramid like you said right right so that, that's where the book comes in that, that was helpful so, so i yeah, I, uh, yeah after the two months the second month of the antimicrobials uh i felt great um, i felt that i was cured uh of whatever it was that was uh, uh i had never been diagnosed but my symptoms were gone so uh, i moved into the um the motility phase and uh I started with the Motility Pro, and uh, after the first month, uh, I was starting to experience um, some regression uh, back to the same symptoms as before. So uh, I went back to the book, and it said to um, sometimes you just need more time in the Motility phase. So uh, I thought, well, maybe that's it. Maybe I need to stay here a little longer. And I, I started the second month of the Motility Pro. At that point. Um, towards the end of the month, the symptoms uh, were still regressing. So uh, I was kind of slowly moving back to where I was. Mm -hmm. um, and the, and this, all the symptoms were coming back, not as bad as they had been before, but um, I was going back in that direction. So uh, at that point, I decided to go back to the book and see what direction it told me to go. And um, I decided that uh, the second phase of the antimicrobials with the uh, additional add-ons would be proven at that point. So yeah, and so ju and just to clarify, because this is a point that I specifically speak to in the book, because this does happen where people go on antimicrobials, they improve, and then when they come off the antimicrobials, they regress. And it's not necessarily a hard thing to fix, and, and we do speak about that in the book, which is you know, kind of extending your time in antimicrobials a little bit longer, and so that's essentially what, what you started it on um, plus some of the add-ons and, and just for people listening, there's a couple add-ons for, let's say you're buying a car, you can buy a regular car or you can also get, you know, the upgraded turbocharge plus the full power window package. You don't necessarily need to buy the most expensive car or the fastest car in the market. So we start you off with kind of the basic model, so to speak. And then if you're in this position of seeing some improvements, but then regressing, if we have to go through another course of antimicrobials, there's some add-ons we can use to kind of enhance the, the results. And so that's what you're starting to now. Yes, that's what I decided to do. I went with uh, all the add-ons. So um, the, the dissolve. Uh, which is an anti-biofilm agent, just, just for people listening, which, which some, some bacteria and fungus can form this protective coating over themselves. And that can be one of the causes of these uh, symptoms that improve, regress, improve, regress. And so using an agent that breaks apart this film, this protective coating, and allows the antimicrobials to penetrate the organism can, can be helpful. So yeah, that's one of the things in the add-on package. Using that uh, along with the NAC and the, um, the artemisian. Artemisian, yeah. Artemisian. Yes, uh, that as well. So I've just started the first week of the second month. And at this point, um, I haven't noticed the same benefit as I had before. So uh, I'm kind of waiting and hoping that I get back to the place that I was at the end of the first uh, two-month protocol. Um, but I'm not there yet. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Gotcha. This is a great time uh, snippet because you're, you're not someone who's fully gone through everything and, and gotten all the way out of the woods. So this is, is kind of an interesting time to check in. So just to kind of recap, you've seen results really it sounds like you, you haven't seen this level of improvement prior until doing the healthy gut healthy you protocol but you haven't made it all the way out of the protocol and this i think is a, is a key thing to mention because some books will give you a helpful protocol i don't think there's any gut books as, as you mentioned a moment ago that really give you as in-depth of a map for improving your gut health as my book does 
But even beyond that, there are also some tips for people who improve and then regress. Because this sometimes happens. When someone does a line of therapy, they feel great. But sometimes what's left out of the testimonial or, or, or the, the marketing literature for a book or a course or whatever is the people who did great and then later on regressed. And I built specifically into the book protocol what to do when that happens. And fortunately, this is an outgrowth of what I see in the clinic, where when you're following up with people every month, you see one group of patients uses this protocol, they feel better, and they never look back. But another group improves, and then they start regressing after a number of months. So it's, it's not necessarily difficult. It's just knowing what to do. And so that's right where you are, Travis. And you may need to give it a little while longer. Only I believe you said you're only a week in. So you may need a little bit longer with the more kind of advanced antimicrobial protocol to get there. But, and this is it's funny, like I'm having a conversation with a patient in the clinic right now. Um, what I tell my patients is the fact that you responded to this antimicrobial nudge to the microbiota tells us we're doing the right thing. It's just sometimes we need to do the right thing a little longer. And an analogy, I, I like to use the, you know, the, the injured knee analogy. If you hurt your knee and you were wearing a brace for a while and doing some rehab and feeling better, but you went back to playing sports too soon, you might see your knee pain regress. Sure. Right? And so it's not necessarily a big deal. we got to get back on the rehab protocol, wear the brace for a little while longer, stay in that kind of post-injury rehab phase just a bit longer. and Sometimes that's really all that we need to do to fully get someone over the hump. So this is actually a great point in time to check in on. And, and um, it, will, it would be great if we can get another snippet from you, you know, when you're on the other side of the hump to sure. kind of put these together. Um, love to when I get there. Do you have any, any questions uh, for me, I guess, while, while, you, while you have me here? And then do you have any words that you want to offer people listening in close? Um, one thing that I've, I've, I've skipped forward to in the book is uh, how you eventually, and I think this is a mistake I may have made uh, when I came off of the antimicrobials the first time, um, the, pr the proper procedure to um, kind of start stepping away from some of these supplements that, uh, that you go through. Mm -hmm. And what I did uh, when I got done with the second month of the first um, antimicrobial protocol is I basically quit all the antimicrobials, uh, along with the probiotics, um, and was just on the Motilip Pro. Um, I thought I was done. I thought I was, like I said, cured. Uh, so I didn't see the need for those things anymore. And when I looked at the, uh, towards the back of the book, um, it, it shows what's, what order to come off of these things. And actually I should have stayed on the probiotics, uh, while I was still taking Motilip Pro. Do you think right. that affected my regression? It certainly could have. Uh, and, and this is, this is why I, I do recommend when, when people read the protocol that they read through it fully first before doing it, because you want to make sure you understand the whole map so that you don't just follow part of the map. And then in your case, maybe jump ship prematurely, uh, which is fine. I mean, this is part of the learning process, right? I, I understand, I understand the spirit of them feeling better and all right, just on with my life totally get that. And I appreciate that. I think that's probably a healthy psychology to have. However, um, coming back to the rehab analogy, we don't want to get you back onto the, the sporting field too early post rehab. And so it sounds like that may have been what happened. And what likely happened here was there was some dysbiosis in your gut, some imbalances in the fungus bacteria and like organisms in the gut that was improving from the protocol. And you got to a point where your symptoms were gone. And that's fantastic. But instead of winning yourself back down off of the supports into, you know, a, a normal life, you kind of jump there. So instead of a stair step, it was just like a cliff. Yeah. And what may have happened there was you, you open the door for those imbalances to come creeping back. And the probiotics are actually a type of antimicrobial. And this is one of the things, as you know, I talk about in the book. Yeah, I think it's really underappreciated that probiotics can fight things like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and fungus and yeast. And we haven't done obviously any testing, which, and you really don't need to, we just need to understand if there's imbalances in the gut. We don't need to know exactly what they are. We need, you know, if, if you have symptoms, we can presume that there are some imbalances in the gut and then we can use these tools to rebalance you. 
And so everything was working according to plan, but we didn't follow the plan all the way as we should have. And so we saw the gut come back to balance and then that equaled your symptoms going away. Fantastic. But then there was a cliff right down to not the appropriate kind of follow up and follow through. So when I tell people to really follow the book protocol, it's for a good reason, because these are all things I've learned through you know, hundreds of patients every year for multiple, multiple years, you start to see how these things play out. And while my ultimate objective is to get you and anyone else to a point where they have the broadest diet possible and the minimum amount of supplements possible, we want to make sure that we don't fall off a cliff to get there and that we, you know, uh, go on to the program and we offer the program just so we avoid any of these drops like this. But this is actually um, a few examples that are really, really poignant because these are things that will affect a lot of people. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm, I'm, but don't, don't hit the wrong way, but I'm, I'm glad you're making some of these mistakes because they're really valuable learning points for people. Sure. That's why I brought that up. I hope um, to everyone out there, uh, read, read through the whole program before you decide that you're going to uh, stop anything. You know, it, it's important, like you said, to know the whole plan before you decide to uh, jump off a cliff. Right. Um, going back to knowing the whole plan, uh, one of the reasons that I was going that far ahead in the book was I wanted to see uh, what uh, the end result, what kind of supplements uh, did you recommend uh, once uh, everything's said and done? And that's another question I had. Um, I was surprised to see such a high dosage of probiotics, even after you make it to, um, I forget the, I guess the eighth step, the enjoy and have fun step. Um, I was hoping to get to a point to where uh, probiotics would not be something that I needed to worry about. But uh, from what the book says, uh, that's not the case, that it may be something that you recommend on an ongoing basis even after symptoms uh, have been gone for some time. And then there's, a, there's a key word there, which is may, right? So specifically in the protocol, we have you stay on the probiotics for a term once you've, so you hit your peak level of improvements and you wean off a number of things and you're left with a couple things. But, and this is an important thing to be um, clear on, you want to test a wean off of the probiotics and only stay on them if you notice your symptoms regress when you come off of them. So staying on a probiotic is only dependent upon someone coming off them and noticing they do better when they're on them. And this, what this really does is it helps answer the question of who should be on what in the long term and, and how do we get to the most minimal protocol. Now, most people can come off most probiotics and be okay, but some people do notice and usually what this looks like is using loose stools as an example. Their stools look great. They come off probiotics and their stools don't go back to normal, but maybe they're a little bit loose. And so people notice, you know, if I take my probiotics every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, that's enough to keep my stools looking consistent and, and well-formed. I also mentioned in the book that you want to periodically revisit this wean off because what happens at month four may be different at month eight or month 12. So it's important to periodically revisit weaning off of all the supports so that you know if you're someone who can be on nothing and be okay, or maybe needs a little bit of support, or maybe for someone who has a very severe case of IBS or IBD, you may need even a little bit more support. So there's no right or wrong answer there. But what we want to do is stair step to getting to a point where you're on the minimal dose of any kind of support in the long term, and that will be taken on a case by case basis. Well, my next question was, and I think you just kind of answered it, was um, another the dosage of the probiotics that you were recommending people to stay on. Um, in the book, it says um, a teaspoon of the probiotics, which would actually be, uh, according to the website, four billion mm -hmm. uh, on the dosage. Now, um, it, it, when you go to the store and you buy pro probiotics, generally. Um, you can't even find out a four billion uh, most of the time, but a hundred billion is a high dosage um, from what I've seen and what's offered. So um, it sounds like from what you're saying is a probiotic may be necessary and the, the dosage will vary depending on the person and the symptoms. Right. Right. And exactly. Coming back to the, the point from a moment ago, which is as part of kind of that step eight, which is maintenance and fun. And that's attempting a wean off. And so when you wean off something completely, 
if you notice a regression in your symptoms, then I recommend going back on and trying to find a minimal effective dose. So really what this comes down to said succinctly is you're working toward a minimal effective dose. And for everyone, that's going to be a little bit different. So I don't give a specific dose because there is, it would be incorrect for me to say the maintenance dose of this probiotic is 50 billion CFU. Because for some people, that'll, that'll be too much and they won't need it. And for other people, it won't be enough. So it's, it's a great question and definitely something I, I hope uh, we help aid other people in having clarity on, which is the minimal effective dose could be anything. And just because the book protocol gives you one dose, you know, from there, when you're trying to find the minimal, it could be any derivative of that, you know, full dose. I understand. Okay. That, yeah, that, that makes, that makes sense. Um, when you're, when you're trying to determine uh, a probiotics or I guess I was going to ask about a dose, but how do you, how do you consider things like natural probiotics, like a kombucha or a sauerkraut? Do you consider those as, um, uh, how do you, how do you put those into the equation? Do you factor them in at all? And uh, how much of a probiotic are you actually getting from those kind of sources? Well, you can look on the label to get a read for what the probiotics are in those different foods. There, there's not one answer that equates to kimchi to sauerkraut and to kombucha. They're all going to be a little bit different in both their probiotic makeup and their dose. But as I mentioned in the book, I think probiotics in your foods or probiotic rich foods are definitely a part of a healthy diet. They won't be for everyone. Some people will notice they don't do well in those foods, but I think the majority will be okay with those. And they're definitely something I'd incorporate into your diet. Um, and that would be a foundational aspect of trying to incorporate fermented foods into your diet. And I, I wouldn't try to kind of offset, you know, um, dose for dose, but rather build those into your diet. And then you also have your support supplemental probiotics. And then with time, you'll go through the exercise of trying to find the minimal effective dose. And, you know, hopefully your minimal effective dose will be nothing. But if you need a little bit to supplement in addition to what you're getting in your diet, then you'll figure that out when you go through that wean off process. So, you know, they're, they're both something to be considered. And hopefully you can get there just with food. But if not, you can use whatever minimal dose of the probiotics that you need. And those kind of foods, are those okay during the, uh, like the antimicrobial step? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, that is all the questions I have for you. Cool. Well, this is great. This turned out to be kind of half, uh, I guess, conversation about your success and then also half, you know, Q&A and typical stumbling blocks. So I think this will actually be helpful in, in two veins for people. So uh, thank you, Travis, for, for taking the time. Any, any parting words you want to leave people with? Um, just have faith in the process. And if you're like me, uh, you know, I, I made it through four days of fasting, um, uh, many different diets that, uh, that were not necessarily convenient. And um, a whole month of antimicrobials uh, before I noticed any benefit at all. But uh, it was at that point in the process, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't give up because uh, that's, that's when I did notice more of a benefit than I've had in as long as I can remember. So you have to hang in there. Yeah. Sage advice. Well, thank you again, Travis, for taking the time to speak with us. And then shoot us a, a note when you're out of the woods. I'd love to follow up with you again then. Sure. That'd be great. Awesome. Thanks again, Travis. Take care. Thank you.